Well, hello there, and thank you for joining us for this edition of Focus in the Mix with Denise Ames here in Hollywood, California. The show is very proud to be sponsored by Colombo's Italian Restaurant and Nightclub in Eagle Rock, featuring incredible weekly food specials by Chef Raul. And if you're looking for a cool spot to host a party or banquet, why not utilize their beautifully remodeled intimate dining room? Now, besides catching the show on our website, focusinthemixwithdeniseames.com, you can also see us on blabbermouth.net, bravewords.com, and many other premier music websites. And please make friends with us on Facebook. Just search Focus in the Mix with Denise Ames. And we also have a Twitter account at Denise Ames TV. Well, today coming up, it's going to be special interview clips of rock star Steve Priest. He is, of course, an original member of Sweet. And we're running these and celebrating Sweet's being back out on the road, uh, doing all kinds of international concerts. They were just in Canada over this weekend. Also coming up will be your viewer comments this time around about our Best of Juan Crucier of Rat episode. But first, it's entertainment news. Many in the rock and roll world have been mourning the recent death of guitarist extraordinaire Ronnie Montrose. All Access Magazine's Maya Don Henderson reported on the honorary tribute to the late guitar player at the rock star studded event held at the Regency Ballroom in his hometown of San Francisco recently. Fellow guitarist Neil Schoen of Journey fame played at the sold-out event, as did Sammy Hagar. Hagar's huge career was launched by Montrose decades ago. Also on hand to celebrate his life were members of Tesla, Night Ranger, and Kiss. Ronnie Montrose played with Van Morrison, Edgar Winter, and of course his band with Hagar, Montrose, over his 40-year career. There's an upcoming live DVD release of Ronnie Montrose, his first ever recorded, which took place just weeks before his death by suicide. And the Happy Together tour kicked off last month, celebrating huge musical acts from the 1960s. This time around, the tour features the Turtles and the Monkees' original member, drummer, and singer, Mickey Dolenz. The latter, of course, reminds us of the recent passing of our beloved monkey, Davy Jones. Dolenz is keeping his memory alive by performing such hits as I'm a Believer and Last Train to Clarksville for fans. In 1986, the Monkees had the largest grossing tour of the year, and that was 20 years after their heyday. I saw them during that tour with my best friend Charse at what was then called the Jack Murphy Stadium in my hometown of San Diego, and they were awesome. The Turtles, who have sold more than 60 million albums, actually pushed out the Beatles, Penny Lane, from the top spot on the charts with their own number one, Happy Together. Hence, why the tour is of the same name. Also featured on the bill are the Buckinghams, the Grassroots, and Gary Puckett and the Union Gap. We're coming up right after this quick break. It's going to be our Best of Steve Priest of Sweet interview clips, and then it's going to be your viewer comments about the Juan Crucier of Rat episode, so don't go away. Where can you enjoy live music every night? Colombo's Italian Restaurant and Jazz Club, located in Eagle Rock, the heart of L.A. Open daily for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, serving the city since 1954. Authentic Italian cuisine, generously poured cocktails, all served in a casual, festive atmosphere. Come for the food, drinks, and friendly people. Stay for the live music. Full bar area, private party room, catering, and takeout. For reservations, just call 323-254-9138. See you at Colombo's. Get that perfect shot with Barbara Porter Photography. Barbara's innate talent and friendly approach is simply the best. Actors, musicians, that special someone, and pets. Her gift certificates make an excellent gift for anyone. And don't forget those holiday photos and greeting cards, a great idea for any occasion. To view some of her incredible work, visit myspace.com, Barbara Porter Photography, or call 818-347-9472. When you were first born in England, tell us a little bit about your upbringing and how you got interested in music in the first place. Well, my dad was a semi-musician. He wanted to be, he was in a Hawaiian band, you know, doing Hawaiian was, music. Did you do the ukulele? I, that was the first thing I picked up was a ukulele. Mm. Don Ho, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I sang in the church choir, so I knew I could sing and I could read music, mm. actually. Wow. Wow. And uh, then I decided to move up to uh, a real guitar. Is it true that you actually made your first bass guitar? Yes, I did. I couldn't afford to buy one. 
So I bought the wood and made one. It was I just used the fret saw and mm. cut it out the shape. I, you know, penciled on the shape, and then I don't know what the heck I made a, a neck out of, and I put frets on it as well. The strings, would you? Uh, well, I used bass strings. You can, I mean, yeah, some of it I bought. My dad made the uh, bridge, mm. and then I just bought the machine heads, and uh, I think it bent a bit as you tighten it up. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's but okay. it worked. Who decided and why f to call it the sweet? And you got to also tell me why the the's in there instead of just sweet. Um, I don't know, because it, it was the sweet shop, so we just cut the shop off and it was the sweet, which didn't make much sense. So later on, a few years later, we just dropped the the. In America, I've got the name, but officially it's the sweet because somebody has got sweet, believe it or not. Mm. It's not a band, but it doesn't matter. The, okay. So we, it's sweet. <laughs> we all know who you are, though. Yeah. All right, so that was uh, in 1968, and then three short years later, in 1971, you guys actually started already getting successful, which these days is kind of unheard of because it takes forever if you're ever going to get successful, but it only took you guys three short years. The big song was Little Willie. Well, Coco went to number two in huh. England, but I don't think they released it here. Okay. And then uh, there was Papa Joe, which is another Calypso-type song. And then Little Willie. Which they still play today on, on uh, radio here in Los Angeles. They all go nuts when we That's play crazy. it. crazy. Some of our songs are everlasting. I mean, Blitz, mm -hmm. for instance, you could, they'll be playing that in another 40 years' time. It's an anthem. It is, Ballroom yeah. Ballroom Blitz. Yeah. When we first heard it, Chapman gave it to us in a very, very basic form. And we sat, sat there at a rehearsal studio going, what the hell are we going to do with this? It was awful. The, in fact, it's out. They've released it. Somebody's, you can get hold of it now. Huh. It's awful. And so we sat there for about three hours. And then um, Phil Wayman came in and he said, I've got a great idea. He went, oh, thank God for that. Because <laughs> we haven't. He just kept, sat down with his drumsticks and did a Sandy Nelson. And we went, Oh, hmm. <laughs> okay. We'd already written Fox by then, and but Blitz was released here uh, about two or at least a year later than it was in England. Hmm. And <clears throat> Blitz went straight in at number two in England hmm. and stayed there. So they released it here about a year later when we'd released Fox in England, and Fox went to, mm, that went to number two. Jimmy Eat World, Duran Duran, Dwight Yoakam, members of Black Eyed Peas and Corn. What do they have in common? They all use Perlman microphones. Super high quality bikes at very affordable prices. Every Perlman mic is handmade in the U.S. using top of the line tubes and technology with that classic look of the 60s. Each comes with power supply, handmade cable shock mount and carrying case. Customizing and Beatles style pop filters also available. Call 818-763-4581 or visit PerlmanMicrophones.com. All the quality at a fraction of the cost. Perlman Microphones. Don't miss Focus in the Mix with Denise Ames. The half-hour Hollywood TV series features rock star interviews, entertainment news, segment guests, and more. Tune in on the web at focusinthemixwithdeniseames.com anytime around the world. Sponsored by Colombo's Italian Restaurant and Jazz Club in Eagle Rock. Fox on the Run. Who wrote that, actually? Me and Andy, basically. I came up with the title in the middle of the night. And tell me a little bit about how you did it, because that's such an iconic song. Can you give me the backstory on how you guys came up with that song, the lyrics? Um, it was about a groupie, basically. Oh. Well, oh, Foxy. Yeah. So, no, no, I don't want to know your name. It's. <laughs> <laughs> Get it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like gnaw your arm off in the morning. <laughs> oh, my gosh. We recorded that on the English version of Desolation Boulevard, and it's seven minutes long, mm. and it's totally different. Love is like oxygen. We were recording level-headed in France, and our, our sound engineer came in and he said, he was a piano player. He was on uh, quite a few of our tracks, actually. He came in and he said, look, I've got a great idea for a movie. And we went, all right. So he just went down and it was something like 
I don't know, he was jumping over the wall or something, I don't know. But uh, and so we, we got into the studio and went, let's, you know, with a, with a real piano player who was a, an arranger, etc. Mm-hmm. And we did the full version of it, which I don't think you've heard. Love is Like Oxygen? Mm, the full version, who, seven minutes long. Who? It was Andy Scott and... Um, Trevor Griffin that wrote it. Trevor Griffin was our sound engineer. He came up with the original idea. So what do you like better, Fox on the Run or Love is Like Oxygen? Well, Fox goes down. I think Fox was a bigger hit here, so people recognize it more. But personally for you, which song do you oh, like Oh, Fox. Better? Fox on the Run? Yeah. Okay, what do you like better, Ballroom Blitz or Fox on the Run? Oh, that's a pretty even. Actually, if you had to pick one child to save, <laughs> Sophie's <laughs> choice. <laughs> um, oh, Fox! Really? Mm. Interesting. Well, it's a baby, you know. It's, it's your baby. It's, yeah. All right. Now you have been classified as bubblegum rock and glam rock. I want to hear it from the horse's mouth. Which are you? Neither, really. We started out sounding like bubblegum, but if you the B-side of Coco is called Dummy Wrong All Right, which Queen ripped off and turned it into Tie Your Mother Down. Uh, if you listen to the two, yes. you will know what I'm talking about. Yes. And we used to open the set with, with um, Dummy Wrong All Right, and people were not mm. at all expecting what we were playing. Mm. Because we were pretty tough on stage. So what would you classify, if not bubblegum and not glam, what would you classify uh, sweet? Um, p- pop rock. Pop rock? Mm. Glam rock was one of those silly things that came out of Top of the Pops. With It started off with um, you know, Mark Boland. Yeah, well, Mark Boland came on with a, a, a pink boa. And <laughs> it's, now it, that's opened, glam. it opened the door. Right, I went, yeah. okay. Huh. You want stupid? I'll show you <laughs> stupid. 1979, unfortunately, your singer, Brian, left. Yeah. But you remained friends with him, and you took over the vocals until you guys broke up for the first time in 82. What was it like stepping up to the mic in place of uh, Brian doing the Nerve-wracking. It's amazing how differently you're looked upon as a singer and not a singer-bass player. Of course, that wore heavily on Brian after a while and he, he used to um, have a couple of drinks before interviews and then to calm him down. The pressure yeah. was all on him. Yeah. Yeah, gotcha. And then he'd arrive in some of the... Uh, he'd be as drunk as a skunk. Mm-hmm. Why did he leave in 79? Um, the pressure on his voice, actually, because mm. a lot of the songs are really up there. And he smoked like a chimney. So he used to lose his voice a lot. And uh, he wanted to do country stuff. No way, really? Yeah, it was all his... I've got some songs of his. And they're all... It's like I'm speaking voice, actually. Go ahead, ready? I'm Forrest Whitaker for People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals. And this is my daughter, True. Hi. Life is full of choices. And many years ago, I chose to become a vegetarian. And it's one of the best choices I've ever made. And since True's dad was a vegetarian, she decided to be vegetarian too. You may decide to go vegetarian for better health, for a better environment, or you can be like True and I and just decide you don't want to eat meat anymore. I love animals and I love being a vegetarian. I'm Forrest Whitaker. And I'm True Whitaker. And I'm... We're vegetarian. And we're vegetarians. vegetarians. 81 was your last show uh, at Glasgow University. Did you as the band, did you know that was going to be your last show? I don't think so. It was mm-hmm. the, I mean, we didn't positively think, you know, oh, this is it, last show. It was, um, it was the end of a tour. You know, we worked our way up England and ended up there. And uh, I, I think it just all sort of fell apart after that. Mm. I was living in New York. By then, in okay. fact, I moved to New York in 1979. So I was doing a lot of commuting. Right. You actually remained friends with Brian until he unfortunately passed away in 97. He had liver failure. Say to the viewers a few words about Brian and, and uh, you know, his last days and what you'd like to say about your friend. Oh, Brian, was, he, was, he had a huge heart. He'd give you anything. But um, 
He used to like it because he was Scottish. Well, not because he was Scottish, but usually Scottish people like to have a bevy or two. And he liked to drink, but as he said to me, I love to have a drink, but I can't keep up. <laughs> he said, you know, his metabolism was that he, he would have a couple of drinks and be going, oh, 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 and we're still going, pardon? Yeah. <laughs> Alcohol and him just didn't mix. Didn't mix, yeah. no. Oh six, you released a CD, Priest's Precious Poem. Yeah, a friend of mine, I was wrote um, a lot of songs in New York with a guy called Marco Del Mar, who I was in a band with briefly in 1980, 81. As well as sweet. As sweet, I was going to yeah. say, same time. You're doing double duty. Well, it's different, different sides of the, the pond. Okay. And uh, wrote a load of songs. We put. I lived in an apartment, or me and Maureen lived in an apartment, and I had this little four-track tape recorder, um, and he'd come over every like Wednesday night, and we'd put these songs down that we came up with, mm -hmm. one of which was Talk To Me, which was in a film called Fast Food, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. I used to make a lot of money out of that. Hmm. They'd re-release it. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Got little residuals there. Yeah, but anyway, yeah. Um, when I moved out here, I had a friend called uh, Brett, and uh, he went through all the cassettes that we'd done and put them on a CD. I mean, there's bits and pieces of songs that unfinished. And, uh, mm -hmm. and I went, I wonder if anyone's interested. And I sold loads of them. Where it, can people get them? Um, Cleopatra Records. Uh, at their website? But yeah, Cleopatra's released it as a 78, uh, I mean okay. a 78. Um, <laughs> vinyl. Vinyl, thank yeah. you. Let's talk about the current suite members. You, of course, are the original, and um, I want to first mention Stuart, because it's because of him, actually, that we got this interview, Stuart Smith. Oh, okay. Tell me a little bit about uh, your buddy Stu. Well, Stuart's from England, so... You've known him for a long time. Known him since mm -hmm. uh, about a year after I moved out here, which is 1986. A common denominator put us together for some reason. Mm -hmm. He knew somebody that Maureen knew, that blah, 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 blah. So we sort of met. How did you find Joe? Uh, Stuart um, is a friend of uh, Richie, who's the drummer. They lived in the same house at one point. And uh, I did a few gigs with them, uh, money raising things after 9-11 and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I played with him and they knew a, a keyboard, they both knew Joe because he's in uh, some tribute bands, you mm -hmm. know, we all have to earn money. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went and saw him and I went, whoa, he's mm -hmm. got a set of lungs. And he has, he's got an amazing voice. Does he sound like Brian? If you're in the same register as Brian, everyone sounds like Brian. <laughs> uh, but when you get when you get into the scream, he's got a, a much stronger voice. When you say he, you mean Joe? Mm -hmm. Okay, so he can do Fox on the Run, and it oh, sounds yeah, just, just like it. Yeah, it right. sounds the same. And then you also have Stevie Stewart, and your name back in the day was Stevie Priest. <laughs> yeah, first time we had a rehearsal, all of us together. I th I always thought when I was going, oh, this one's simple until you get into it, and they're not. Mm. A lot of sweet songs are really complicated. There's like Teenage Rampage has got two, you know, everything's four four, you know, timing, da 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 da, da, da except in one part where it goes da 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 I just sort of did it then, you know, I didn't think about it. Mm -hmm. But uh, so there's, you know, I said, oh, this one's easy, and they all go, shut up. Where can you enjoy live music every night? Colombo's Italian Restaurant and Jazz Club, located in Eagle Rock, the heart of L.A. Open daily for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, serving the city since 1954. Authentic Italian cuisine, generously poured cocktails, all served in a casual, festive atmosphere. Come for the food, drinks, and friendly people. Stay for the live music. Full bar area, private party room, catering, and takeout. For reservations, just call 323-254-9138. See you at Colombo's. Who are your musical influences? In early days, I, I, saw the, I saw the Rolling Stones when I was about 15, and it was the first night of their first tour. And 
I bought their album straight away. And I looked at it and I went, you know, their influences were blues. Uh, and so I started buying blues records. I mean, real, you know, old stuff. And so that put me in one direction. And then I was listening to um, Cream, who were one of the best bands ever. And I sort of went on from there. And then the Who came along. You know. In 2008, you, ch you decided to uh, reform Sweet after you went to an Eric Clapton concert? Right. I was, I was there with both my wife and both my daughters. And at the time, my smallest daughter was, what did I say? She was about 12, I think. And uh, they were sitting there watching Eric Clapton. And I'm going, why am I sitting down here? And mm. he's still up there. Mm -hmm. And all the kids from 15 to whatever mm -hmm. were all singing along. They all knew the lyrics. And I went, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. I've got to get back on the stage. There and, you go. Yeah. Do you have individual people that, that you look up to? John Entwistle. Ah. Oh. Who sadly is no longer with us. Mm. Jet Harris, as I said before, from the Shadows. He was he was the one that actually made me pick up bass. But uh, so then my influences were he, um, Entwistle, uh, Jaco Pistorius at one point, but he was a nutcase. Who was that? What band? Weather Report. He was an amazing bass player, but I think he liked his substance this too much because mm. when I Typical. saw him, it was like. What are you doing? They were all like that back then. <laughs> yeah, who, who, do you, who do you think is good now as a, as a bassist? Oh. He's like, uh. Oh. I don't know. I haven't really noticed any. Being a rock star, famous rock star, you hang around other famous people. And I spied a photo of with you and Michael Jackson here in your home. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about how that came about. Maureen was his publicist for a while. <sighs> Whoa. So uh, we that was I can't remember which tour that was. I think it was the bad tour. And then there's a beautiful picture of you with Brian on stage. Do you remember when that that show? That was I don't remember the actual show, but it was on um, 1978. Mm. I recognised the guitar. Mm. That was a level-headed tour with Bob Seger. And I think that was when he was beginning to use too many pearls. All right. Unfortunately. What's next for you? I'm setting up a studio upstairs and I'm going to start writing songs again. I'm not too sure what style they're going to be. They'll sound a bit like Sweet because I'm writing them. How can they not? But I don't want to go backwards. You know, this uh, rewriting Fox on the Run is not on. And if something's a hit, it's because it's a hit. Right. You can't make it a better hit. Right. We're just lucky that you're still willing to go out there and play it for us live. Oh, yeah. No, it's fun. Yeah. It's, a, it's amazing what the, the audience is of 15 to 60. Yeah, and we were talking about this earlier when you do Ballroom Blitz, which, of course, is your obvious encore. I was asking if they break out into a mosh pit, and you said yes. And it's funny because when Ballroom Blitz originally was um, performed back in the 70s, there was no such thing as mosh oh, pits no, yet. It so it's funny that now that... Well, they go nuts. <laughs> yeah. they are, it's quite funny. What advice would you have for musicians today? Keep at it. You've just got to keep at it. Don't get... You know, if it's not happening, it, it will, if you think it will. You've got to think positive and just keep going because um, you have to have self-confidence because nobody else has got it in you. You know, you've, you've got to do it yourself. You've just got to show the people that you're going to keep going until you damn well make it. <laughs> Great advice. Oh, well, I did. Get that perfect shot with Barbara Porter Photography. Barbara's innate talent and friendly approach is simply the best. Actors, musicians, that special someone, and pets. Her gift certificates make an excellent gift for anyone. And don't forget those holiday photos and greeting cards, a great idea for any occasion. To view some of her incredible work, visit myspace.com, Barbara Porter Photography, or call 818-347-9472. And now it's time for your viewer comments. 
Joy Altman sent this in. Juan rocks. Your interviews with him are always such fun. I cherish the focus in the mix of Denise Ames ad from All, As All Access Magazine, signed by Juan, that you secured for me a few years ago. It is displayed prominently in my office. I'm so glad to hear that, Joy, and I totally remember Juan signed that for you in his garage when I was at his house. <laughs> and Bo Cardi says, thanks, I love you and your show, especially the Juan Crucier episode, and I love to rat and roll. Who doesn't? And Mark Schloss says, hey, Denise, I didn't even remember that you asked my question to Juan Crucier. Awesome, and thank you so much. Great interview, and hold on to that Frisbee. Okay, I went and got it just to prove to you guys I still have the Frisbee. Members of Rat Without Naming Names try to steal it from me, but they can't have it. Okay, and let's see. Bing. <laughs> Chris Gingling says, no longer formally of Rat, Juan Crucier is back in the band. As many of you already know, Juan recently played a big festival in Maryland, and from what I gather, he was quite awesome. And Adam... Backbar says Juan's background voice colored everything in those songs. I've always liked Rat. They didn't go power ballad. Totally agree there. Percy's vocals were always monotone and tough. No screaming like a girl. Juan's voice carried all the melody. Well, thanks so much for all that feedback uh, about uh, our best of interview clips of the Juan Crucier of Rat episode. If you would like a chance for us to read a comment you have on the air, all you have to do is make friends with us on Facebook and post a comment there and we may, may pick it to read on a future episode. Well, that does it for this edition of the show. I certainly hope you enjoyed our Best of Interview Clips of Steve Priest, who, of course, is an original member of the band Sweet. If you are thinking about adopting a pet or five or ten, which is highly recommended by myself as well as my camera person, Barbara Porter, <laughs> those of you who know her know what I'm talking about, Please only adopt versus purchasing them and always spay and neuter your four-legged kids. I am your host, Denise Ames, and I want to say thank you for letting me rock your world. Don't miss Focus in the Mix with Denise Ames. The half-hour Hollywood TV series features rock star interviews, entertainment news, segment guests, and more. Tune in on the web at focusinthemixwithdeniseames.com anytime around the world. Sponsored by Colombo's Italian Restaurant and Jazz Club in Eagle Rock. Jimmy Eat World, Duran Duran, Dwight Yoakam, members of Black Eyed Peas and Corn. What do they have in common? They all use Perlman microphones. Super high-quality bikes at very affordable prices. Every Perlman mic is handmade in the U.S. using top-of-the-line tubes and technology with that classic look of the 60s. Each comes with power supply, handmade cable shock mount, and carrying case. Customizing and Beatles-style pop filters also available. Call 818-763-4581 or visit PerlmanMicrophones.com. All the quality at a fraction of the cost. Perlman Microphones.